thanks so much for coming on, firstly, pal. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Pleasure. Good I've man. done a, a, and this is my background, John, in your honour tonight. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as skinny as that anymore, though. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Listen, Pat, w- welcome to the Manchester is Blue show. I really appreciate it. Have we got any time constraints with you, John? Or can, can we have you for, for a bit of time and just yeah, whittle yeah. away some questions? As long as you want, mate, yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's what I love to hear. Thanks so much. So we're going to give you um, go, to go a bit of background on your history, really. I'm obviously going to spend a lot, of, as you can probably tell, with City fans. I don't know if we, might, we give that away or not, but we're going to have a bit of background <laughs> of before you started with us. And um, yeah. just to go through your, your, your move coming into City, moving on to City and the bits in between, which the, the juicy bits, which we really want to talk to. But, you know, I, I don't like to use the U word too much on this page, on this site, but you, you, uh, you started life off at United. Which, um, which, you know, we can forgive you, you know, fair enough, everyone makes a mistake in their life. What, what happened there? <laughs> oh, it was basically, they, they, uh, they signed me when I was nine years of age, nine, ten years of age. They, uh, they, they scouted me, basically. Uh, I got a call, it was very late on actually, it was very it was late on, on, I think it was a couple of days before the actual trial period was beginning, you know, it was, uh, I think it was a, it might have been a Friday or a, a Thursday uh, after school. Uh, and it was, it was a very late edition. I think it was 30, 40 lads, you know, who was going down and, and all trialling. And uh, I, got the, I got the call quite late. And uh, as I say, I went down there because it was a late edition. I wasn't in the first selection of group of lads who were playing and so forth and so on. I went in the second group and then the third group came around and I still wasn't involved and. You know, I got on with about, I don't know, I think it was three 20 minute games at the time, and I got on with like 15 minutes to go. And, you know, uh, the rest is history. They signed me there, and then that night, and I was there for like uh, 10 years, nine, nine years, 10 years. Oh, well, so you obviously, you obviously made a, uh, a good impact to be there for that long, because obviously it's, it's a really ruthless game, isn't it, at that age? So you must, you must have made an impression. It is. Uh, and that's, that's the difficulty. I mean, when I suppose now it's, it's even more, more difficult and harder because they're going in at such a younger age. Uh, they're going in six and sevens now, you know, where, you know, me, I know I was nine, but it was, it wasn't really as structured as it is now, you know, when you're playing games and you know, we, I think we trained once every couple of weeks, you know, uh, every six weeks or something like that. We got together for a day or two and it was like a, it was more like the, the summer holiday or the, the holiday camps really, you know, when school finished and you went yeah. in for a day or two and, and did it like that. And then eventually I got picked, I uh, went through the school of excellence uh, all the way up to 16 and got offered a uh, YTS at 16. So and it's, it's a difficult time because, you, you know, you never know when, when it can end because, yeah. you know, you might, you might not get picked from one year from the next. You might have a bad year through injury or something, you know, even when you're a young lad and it just didn't. So it was difficult. But, you know, fortunately for me, I, I, made, I managed to make the, make the grade and make the step up and went all the way to professional with them. Have you, have you always been a striker? Yeah, always, yeah. Just you've never, you never kind of had a wobble and went to goalkeeper at some point in your career like most people do then. <laughs> you know what? No, but I've always enjoyed playing centre half or, you know, defensively. Yeah, I've always yeah. enjoyed doing that. I always used to do it in training. And I remember one, Sarri Garrison, he played me for a couple of games down there at centre back because he really seen something in me as a defender as well. So, but uh, fortunately, you know, I was doing quite well as a striker as well. And uh, I just continued in that. In that oh, area, uh, just putting the ball in the Met paid the mortgage. Then that's always a good sign. Well, you would have been you would have been a perfect Pep Guardiola signing, John, because he loves versatility. <laughs> a striker and a, and a centre half, he would have loved you. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have had the pace though. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll, move, we'll move on from the dark days at United. Um, yeah. you, you signed for uh, David Moyes at um, Preston in 1997. Yeah. What, what was David like at that age and when you were coming through? What was he like with you? It was actually it was actually Gary Peters who signed there for Preston. Oh, okay. Then it was him. He, he uh, I've just been away in the to the World Cup under twenties uh, for England in the World Cup, and we uh, we had a great team. You know, Michael Owen, Jamie Carrick. Uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot wow. of players in it at the time uh, who went on to great things. And I come back. I've been offered a contract at United, uh, and I just thought it was. I just thought my pathway was a little bit limited, you know, as a striker there. They had some fantastic talented strikers at the time at, at Old Trafford. I mean, Paul Scholes was basically still classed as a striker there, struck, you know, attacking midfielder. So he was one and you know, Solskjaer had just signed him and, and, and so on and so on. So I just thought it was a, a time for me to maybe move on and, and try and make a career for myself. 
Uh, I knew one of the lads who went there as well, Colin Murdoch, he just signed just before him. He showed an interest. Uh, basically, it was done in a day. I went up to talk to him, listened to what Gary Peters had to say. He saw me press the North End, the vision that he's seen and what he was trying to build. And I was literally signed and it was sealed in, in, in one day. And I think he signed pay, pay, pay 250000 for me at the time, which was a lot of money for the, you know, for the yeah, young yeah. kid. Uh, but it was, uh, like I say, it was, it was Gary Peters who signed me. David Boyd was on a coaching staff. He was like first team coach, but he was still actually playing at, the, at that time as well. Oh, okay, right, okay, yeah. Fantastic. What were your main highlights at Preston? Well, do you know what? It was a fantastic club. We didn't, I didn't start very well when I first went there. It was, it was one of them, that, you know, we, we wasn't doing fantastically well as a team. I'd missed the whole pre-season because of obviously being away with England and then coming back and having a little bit of time off and back and forth with uh, with United and Preston, if you know what I mean. It, was, yeah. it wasn't, was I'd, re I'd really missed quite a big chunk of it. So I think that looking back now and looking, being through my, throughout my career, if you miss a pre-season, you're always playing catch-up and it's always a struggle to get that fitness and that, you know, the intensity level that you need to to be really pushing pushing you for your place in the team and and it was a bit of an eye opener as well you know if you if you think about it I'd gone from Manchester United which was the youth team and the reserves which was predominantly winning every single game you know and, and winning league titles or the titles that they was they was in uh, and winning winning the majority of games so being on a successful team and and scoring goals and you know when you come in and you you're in a fighting relegation battle team with with real hardened professionals who were you know, fighting for their career and their livelihoods as well. It was, it was a bit of an eye-opener at first. So it took me a little bit, a little bit of time to adjust. It took me yeah. uh, a season or two to, to really get to grasp with, uh, grips with it and, and really find my feet and find you know, what I needed to do and how I needed to push myself. You, you had an opportunity to play in um, a playoff final, didn't you, in 2001? Did, did you miss that through injury or was that for any, for any other reason? Is that right, 2001? For Preston. Yeah, yeah, Preston. I played in that. I played in that one. Did you play in that game, did you? Yeah, we played Bolton. We played Bolton. We played uh, Bolton in the final at Cardiff. Uh, we, it was, once again, a fantastic day. Fantastic achievement. We'd, we'd gone up the previous year from League One, what it is now, to the Championship. It was in the Championship. We got in the playoffs. And uh, we was a really good We was a really good team. You know, he, he's, he's a, he was a fantastic coach, David Moyes, and manager. He really was. Uh, I've got nothing but praise for him. The way he, the way he treated me, the way he handled me, his personal relationship with me, his management with me, and and, and the whole group of us as well. We, you know, we had a real good group together, and he and he developed that, he built that, and you know, he he, he nurtured that out to to get the best out of individuals and and come up with a structure that, uh, and a winning formula that really suited the group that we had at Preston at the time. So we was we was challenging. You know, we was really pushing teams that season. I think we beat, I think Fulham went up that. Fulham win it that, that year I think we did but we beat them we actually beat we were the only team to beat them at their place Craven Cottage so we, you know we had a good team and we beat Birmingham we were, we got beat in the play in the League Cup final by Liverpool a couple of weeks before we played them in the semi-finals leading up to it and we you know we beat them on penalties so we've shown you the calibre that we had and the, the level that we was playing at but on the day I think we just went to we went to obviously the playoff final and I think the occasion got to us a little bit You've probably seen it in many games and, and many sporting events where the kind of semi-final is the final for the team, you know, and yeah. they, they've used everything they've got. And, and although you feel physically, you feel fit and you feel ready to go for it and you give it your all, it's kind of a little bit draining and, you, you know, you, the occasion get, got to us, I believe, on the day. And we got beat 3-0, but, it, you know, it wasn't a 3-0. Well, it was a 3-0 game because you beat us 3-0, but, you know, we was right in the game right up until the... Uh, Last yeah. 10 minutes, they know, scored, so scored 17th minute, and then yeah, they didn't. Ricketts got one in the 89th, as you say, right yeah. at the end of the game. So, yeah, he did, he did. And you know, he was right in the game. And I, I had a chance in the first five five minutes, I think, <laughs> just five yards out and ahead, of, just like that when you're showing on the screen there. And uh, I just put it straight into the keeper's arms, and you know, I'll, I'll never forget it. But at the end of the day, it, it was a great experience, it was a fantastic experience for me personally, and it was. team for Preston. It just shown you how far we come in a couple of seasons, and uh, you know what was achievable for individual and, and, and as a group. Well, you, you 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 followed on from that and had the absolute audacity to score a worldie against City, didn't you? How dare you! <laughs> Unbelievable goal! Unbelievable goal! 
Did you? I mean, one of our, one of our admin, one of our uh, dad fielding, one of our manageable admins asked the question: Did was was there any inklings of an interest about City when you were playing us? Any inklings of, of signing for City when when you played against us? It was, yeah. It was. I tell you what, it was. It was. It wasn't that game. It was. I think. I think was that the first game or the second game we played you that season. That was the first game where you scored the worldie, yeah. I thought it was. It was the first game, wasn't it? Because he actually scored in the second game as well at main role. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going for a 50-50 with Stuart Pearce and we, you know... <laughs> oh, crikey, right, yeah. No, but we kind of, you know, we kind of, I kind of looked at him and he looked at me and I thought, right, I'm going for it here. I'm not, you know, I'm not pulling out because uh, I was just never one to do that anyway. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd get stuck in and the way I played, it was, it was kind of my game. And I remember, you know, we kind of looked at each other. We both just smashed each other, the ball stayed still and he kind of helped me up and went, hey, uh, don't be trying to foul me because when we sign you in a few weeks, you know, we'll be teammates. Yeah. And it kind of took me back a little bit and I was thinking, wow, where's that come from? What did Where he do you know? you know, I didn't even know there was any interest or anything, anything of the sort and, you know, it took me back for, it took me uh, on the back foot, for, put me on the back foot, sorry for a little bit, for five or ten minutes. I couldn't get it out of my head and, it might have been a little bit of a tactic by him, to be fair. But, say, it's yeah. not a bad one, that is it. City should start well, using it now. <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't a bad one for him. I mean, he's, he's made some powerless decisions. Like, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely come on to a couple of those decisions yeah, later. That's all right, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you've been asked once or twice. You won't be asked yeah. again. We, um, Chris, one of our other admins, asked the question. Um, obviously, Preston doing really well on that that time, you know, doing quite well, getting in the playoff places. And you, you could have stayed at Preston and helped them get to uh, get promotion and, and generally built up a, a legendary status with them. Yeah. Uh, um, what, what was the main reason, the main catalyst to come into City? It's Man City. <laughs> I didn't say any more, really. I don't, you know, it's, it's basically, it's, it's Manchester City. It's, it's the club there, you know, where I, was, I come from. With, and it was... Everything it meant everything to me when they signed. When they when they come, you know what? I just, I just had a Jimmy Grimble moment. Then it's yeah. City. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know, there's not really more you can you can say by it. They don't have to sell you. They, they didn't have to sell me anything anyway. You know, and even before you know what they are now and the, the fantastic club and what they're trying to do now, it was still Man City. So when Man City came calling, you, you signed for them. You know, and it was that's just that's just how it was. That's amazing. Listen, well, we we signed you in two thousand and two for five million quid, which was a lot of money then. That yeah, was a lot. Of, that was a lot of cash. And and me being, I was very excited at this point. You coming in for five five million quid for players is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Bear in mind some of the players we've had signed from us previously. And how did the, how did the, how how did, how did you take the price tag as a, as a striker coming from Preston and and previously United coming into City for five? Does the price tag affect you as a player? No, I don't. I don't think it. I don't think the price tag does. I think people put try to add that pressure onto you. But me personally, it never really affected me. I just wanted to get started straight away. And you know, when when you look back at it now, you think to yourself, well, the way I started and the team we had at that time and the way we finished the season was phenomenal. Really, you know, it was all. I was scoring goals. I was playing. I was in and out. You know, like he, he did rotate the strikers. To be fair to it, but yeah. I was getting opportunities and I was I, I was doing well. I was scoring goals. It was just. Unfortunately for me, I picked up a, you know, a bad injury in the in the pre-season going up to it, and it was just, you know, I just didn't get started then. And like I said earlier, if you do miss a pre-season, especially, you know, you're going to play in the Premier League, and you, you know, you're getting these new signings in, and we're really, really going for something like we was at the time. You know, I, I missed quite a lot, and it was frustrating. It was difficult at times, uh, but you, you know, you just keep going, and you, you, you just you're a football player. It's your job. It's your it's what you love doing, so you just keep going and you keep trying to push yourself. But it was, uh, I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say the price tag really has much of an effect. I mean, people like to say it does, and but it, it's really, a, that's out of your control anyway as a player, isn't it? You, you don't determine what people are going to pay for you. You just go out there and try and produce. So somebody, you will attract somebody to come in to buy you for a bigger club and, and give you better opportunities to go on, to win things and be successful. And, you know, obviously going up with Man City that season was a, was a massive achievement for myself as well. And obviously working with um, Kevin Keegan must have been yeah. an experience for you. Exactly. Well, I mean, like I say, you know, you talk about Man City coming in for you. Yeah, it didn't matter who would have been manager. You would have gone and signed. But obviously, the added attraction, you've got, you've got Kevin Keegan there, who's, you know, ex-England, and managed all these fantastic clubs, fantastic football player. What are you going to learn from him? You look at all the players that Man City had at the time, the, 
you just want to be in and around that to see how they deal with certain situations, the environment, you know, how they deal with big pressure games, how they deal with games where it's a Tuesday night and you're playing, say, Rotherham away, for instance, and, you know, the tough battling hard games and, you know, just to see how the standard and the level, what you, what you, where you can get to and, you know, how they motivate themselves and, it was just everything just t- ticked every box for me at the time, you know. And uh, like I say, I didn't need any any push in any way to, to sign for Man City. That's, it's, it's phenomenal that's the way you're talking like that. It really, it really is. Now, well, one thing me and me and Dave are talking about is um, Gary Gary Cooks had a bit of a, a dig every now and then about the, the training facilities at Carrington, yeah. um, saying they weren't up to, up to par and so forth. What was your experience? Well, do you know what? I thought it was okay. I thought I didn't see... Uh, an issue with them. Obviously, it's it's not what to the standard and the level that it is now. Uh, and they wanted to take the club further. At that time, at that particular time, they didn't have the funds available which could warrant that, really. If you know what I mean. So it was a, it was a good standard of training facilities. Uh, they was always trying to update it in certain ways, i.e., from the medical department, the medical, the sports science area, which was always helping helping you personally. Yeah. Uh, there was, the, the pitches was always fine. The pitches was always good for me. Getting in to Carrington was a bit of a nightmare sometimes on that main road, but you know that was the only drawback really. But for, yeah. for me, honestly, I, I've never seen, never had an issue with it. And listen, we all want to train at these fantastic complexes, don't we? With all the state-of-the-art equipment and everything, hotel or sleeping pods and, and whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you're a footballer, and you, you go there to train, to work hard, to Listen to what the manager and coaches are doing. Go and implement. Go and tra- work hard on the training pitch. Listen, work towards the game on a Saturday or a Tuesday or a Monday or whenever it may be, and prepare yourself right. That's it. It's funny, you know, because I, I was looking. I was talking to Dave before um, at, the, at the squads that you've played with at City. Yeah. And I, I don't like using this word too much because obviously City now are this big, giant conglomerate beast of a team but the, 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 the team that you played with I, I always saw as a bit of a golden generation I, I you know you, you've got the likes of Sean Wright Phillips Bernabia Berkovic Gota yourself coming in and you know one chop as well Paul one chop yeah. as well yeah. was he there at that time yeah. and could, do you think you could have done more as a team yeah. than what you did absolutely absolutely it's one I suppose it's a regret from all of us really but uh, we had a fantastic team we had a squad we had a fantastic squad we had a little bit of everything, I believe, in that in that uh, squad at that time. You know, we had people who could run with the ball. We had people who could hold the ball up. I myself, we had people who could get in behind. We had great defenders. We had a little bit of flair. We had charisma running throughout the team. We was making signings. I, I just don't think we. I don't think we get well. We, we was always giving hundred percent, and you know, I'd never criticise or label anybody saying that they didn't give 100%, you know, and I never want that to be labelled with me. Uh, but there was times when, I suppose, as a team and collectively, we didn't really produce like we should have. We, you know, we, and we probably let, our, let ourselves down in that period because we should have been challenging a lot higher and we should have been producing a lot better quality uh, of game, you know, in terms of where we were standings in the league, league uh, the results because they were very, very indifferent. There was, you know, it was a lot of draws and defeats and the odd wins here and there. <clears throat> but some of the wins that we got in them seasons and, 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 and ties, you can see the quality that we had and, the, you know, the belief in each other. It just it wasn't consistent enough. And consistency is the key if, you, you know, you want to be in a successful period and, and, and uh, team. It is. And, and Dave rightly mentioned the, the, se- the second season... Um, we strengthened again in, in the strikers department. We brought in Fowler, we brought in Anelka, and obviously Distan as well. Distan makes it into my into my all time City top top team. Yeah. So you know we brought in some real quality there. What was it like for you sitting on uh, sitting in that attacking position and seeing the likes of Fowler and Anelka coming in? Are you thinking to yourself, this is the right time for me to really chomp down on this, or can yeah. you see yourself? How is it? How is it as a striker when you see other strikers coming in? Are you thinking? Are you thinking direct threat? Are you thinking? Obviously, they are a direct threat in a way, but are you thinking this is somebody I can work off and learn from? And how did how did how did you see them coming into that, to that position? Well, that's how I looked at it. I looked at it as something I could learn from and and can increase. Listen, there's all different methods that you and, and things that you work on and as a striker. 
one of the main things and one of the main purposes of being a striker, especially the way we played in the, them times, it was more two strikers up top. If you can form a partnership with a striker and you have this, you know, understanding with each other and, you know, you, 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 you work together and you always know what the other one's doing and, you, you know, you bounce off each other, uh, then you, you're really onto something good. You know, I had it at Preston with David Ely. Uh, many players have had it in different, different areas and, and different eras. And, you know, if we could do that, and I just looked at it like that. I looked at it, well, if I get my opportunity, I'm going to, I'm going to take it before fans and I'm going to try and form a partnership and this kind of relationship with this other striker and, you know, really be, become a force uh, to be reckoned with. Because if you can, if you can, like I say, if you can form that relationship with, with a striker, he might, he might be getting the 15, 20 goals a season. You might be chipping in with 10, you know, 10, 12 goals, but your, 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 your contribution to that is you're, you're, you're assisting him, you're, you're helping, you know, and, I yeah, think yeah. That, that was the key, and that's how I looked at it. You know, that it's sometimes listen, we have an Elka and Fowler, and you know, you're looking at them, and they're going to be arguably the, the number one and number two because of the names and what they've done in the game. And you, you know, you hold your hands up and say, Yeah, fair enough, but if I get my opportunity, I'm going to take it and I'm going to build this relationship with you, either one, whoever it is. I love that. Gonna... I love to hear that. I love to hear that, John. Yeah, no, that's that's lovely to hear. Who, who was your. Um... Oh, it's, it's... The, the actual squad we had, did you have a, a friendship group already within that squad or did, did you kind of come in raw to it and have to introduce yourself to it or did you know any other players from elsewhere? No, I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't. I'd, obviously, I played against them. I just knew him from playing against them, but I didn't know anybody at the time. So I was kind of brand new to everybody in there, in the group. But it's the same as anywhere where you're doing football. You, you know, you, you become part of it very, very quickly and it, it didn't take long really to, to form friendships and, and form... Uh, groups where you, you know you still keep in touch to this day, which is exactly. you know it's, it's, that, that's the beauty of sport. I suppose it's not just football; it's the beauty of sport, especially team sports. When you when you're involved in teams and you're involved in groups of people, you you know you you form relationships and friendships that you know last a long time. Who who was the um, who who was your friendship group in there? Is it is it one that you keep to? Well, there was a few of us actually. I mean, when I first when I first signed. Obviously, you, you've always got your, you know, your your partner or your, your person to person, the player who you room with. Uh, the first time it was Sunjai when I roomed there, and they just signed oh, back. That's brilliant. Was it really? There wasn't very much conversation going on. <laughs> I think the first, it was, I think it was a, the day later we played Birmingham away, and uh, I travelled down. I was on the bench, but I didn't get on. And we travelled down, and I was in with Sunjai, and <clears throat> he'd only just signed himself, spoke very limited English, if any at all. I and mean, he he's just sat in the bathroom for two or three hours before we <laughs> went to bed just on his phone speaking Chinese. And, you know, it seems a bit weird when you talk about it to people, but I suppose he was feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit unaware or... Un ah, for him, yeah. ...in the surroundings that he was, you know. It was, uh, it was strange for him. And I just kept hearing him laughing and talking on, in Chinese in, in the bathroom. And, uh, you know, I'm being kind when I'm saying two or three hours. It was more like four or five hours. Exactly. John, there's a ready-made sitcom there. There's you and Sundry High in a room. Yeah. That's, that's a ready-made sitcom waiting right to happen, that. Yeah. You know what, though? What, what a fantastic signing he turned out to be. What a great person he is, Sundry High. You know, I, I, like I say, I formed a great relationship with him uh, during my time there. And, and after it, when he, you know, when he moved on, I spoke to him many times at different clubs. You know, but I did, I, you know, Richard Dodd, Kevin Orlock, Trevor Sinclair... Robbie Fowler, Joey Barton, Sean Wright Phillips, Stevie Howe. You know, there was all the French last ever this time. There was all all great, great lads who you you know, you like I say, you you form good relationships with them and it was just a it was a really good group to be in. It really was. Like I say, performances would have would have turned around and got better. Who knows what we, what we could have achieved. Agreed. From from your perspective as a striker, who was the best player in the squads that you played for? Or the best couple of players? I know it's a kind of pinpointing to one player there, but who who was your I've always said this. I, I, you know, for me, Ayel Berkovic was unbelievable. Yeah. It really was. You know, fan as well. Amazing to watch. Say, but them two together was, there was something special about them. It really was. And, uh, you know, Ayel Berkovic is, he do, sometimes he doesn't get the credit and that he deserves for me because he, everyone says he's a great, good player, but for me, he was a great player. You know, he, things he, he'd seen him doing training, even in game times, what he did, he'd, he'd, he'd take two or three people or take the go around the keeper, square it to you so you could, you know, take the celebrations and, you know, uh, uh, 
get a goal. And uh, you know, what, what more can you ask for as a striker than somebody who, who will you know, be, be unselfish and give you the, the credit for <laughs> all the hard work that he's done? And, you know, so, uh, like I say, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves sometimes, Al Berkovic. And you know, people have asked me numerous times who was the best player, and I mentioned him, but there, there was too many. I mean, you've got to remember, at the time, Peter Schmeichel came in for a season. So you're looking at what a fantastic talent he was. I think we played Chelsea away, he beat us 4 0, but it should have been 10 10 0 if it wasn't for him. And he, he was 4 to at the time. You know, he was, he was outstanding, he was as a, as a goalkeeper. I'm just looking at. I'm just looking back at this squad that you. This, yeah. this, our, str- our strength and squad was phenomenal. How many players did we have signed for us at this point? Exactly. As, far as, you, as far as you managed to fit on the training pitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what? There was a lot of lads who didn't really feature and they were signed up for for City. I suppose who you know who was just coming through and we were seeing and maybe sometimes you know one of them will, will be an absolute uh, diamond and you know you'll find something uh, and you'll be able to progress them. But uh, well, we did have a big squad. To be fair, we had a we had a really big squad. A lot of them was in and out. There was quite a few injuries at the time, but it, we we certainly did have a have a very very good squad in my eyes anyway, and I'm sure yourselves. From from a, oh yeah for, yeah from from the yeah I, I don't like I don't like to use the word golden generation, but for me it was one I distinctly remember the key the Keegan era. It's, it was phenomenal times to be a City fan for me. Yeah. Um, especially when we're spending five billion quid on, on attacking attackers, that was, a, that was a great time to be a City fan. Um, from from a perspective as a player, who was the, who was your toughest opponent? Toughest opponent? What do you mean in the City squad or just like anyone? I suppose I suppose I was, I was thinking more from an opponent point of view, but in the City squad as well, I can imagine there's a couple of tough nuts there. Yeah, there was. Well, uh, uh, in the City squad, you know, I always and it was always a battle between me and Richard Dunn all the time. Obviously, he was playing centre half or where you know at the time, and defensively when you play any little games. It was a tough battle against Richard. Obviously, we were similar similar age during the you know playing against each other in reserve football when he was at Everton and so on and so on. So, always found it tough against Richard. And, and like we say, we were, we were close friends. Uh, but you know, when you're training, you're playing, you're always giving a, you know you're battling against each other, and that's it. Uh, personally, when against opposition, I think Sam Hoopia. I really do. I thought he was yeah. such a talented defender. He, and listen, he's probably had, he'll probably have his uh, critics, but for me. Playing against him, it was always, always a tough game because one, he was physically strong, he was so clever in his game and in his reading of the game as well. It was, it was everything I seemed to do. He was, he was there just before me, kind of knew what I was doing, and it was really I always, always found it a tough, tough opponent. Some of you. Feel. Oh, brilliant! I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh, I don't want to whiz through your time at City now, but there's there's a there's, there's two particular highs. That, that I remember yeah. as a City fan. Yeah. Um, there's obviously there's obviously the United goal, which yeah. was was phenomenal. That was gr- what a day that was, and obviously the, the FA Cup game as well. But I, I'm going to move. Do you have any other highs apart from them, or particular lows that you you know that we're not particularly aware of that you know you thought to well, yourself? Yeah. Obviously the lows, and you know most players will say this now. And at that time, there wasn't any. What there was, but it wasn't much mental awareness and anything like that. And you know, and what you're going through. But at the time, when you know, I had a lot of injuries, and I kept coming back, and I kept trying to break in, and I was doing all right for a game or two, and then something else would crop up injuries. So, you know, you've got to deal with that all all yourself. And you know, when you when you well, as passionate as I was personally, you know, to be successful at Manchester City, and to be successful for myself, for the club, for the fans, for for everything associated with it. It was really difficult at periods because, you, you know, like I say, you, you know, you really want to go and you want to go and show what you can do. You want to go and make memories for yourself and for the fans and for everything else and, and be part of something special. But it was just such such a difficult period because it was stop start. I was getting injury after injury after injury, and it was just it seemed never ending. And when when you're going through a period like that, and I hadn't previously to that, you know, in my career, I'd, I'd had little hamstrings or little bits and bobs like that, but nothing serious so to get that and to get it so quickly when I joined a new club it was frustrating it was it was it was hard at times really hard really difficult and like I say you know it, I suppose you still, people players are still a little bit like that now they're probably a little bit more open but at the time you just try and battle through it yourself and you you try and fight it yourself and you you know you you try and look for answers yourself when sometimes you know you, you can't you, need, you can't find them answers because it's they're not there, you know. They're just not there for you. You've got to go out and ask people for their advice and their help in terms of. Sometimes maybe I should have gone and asked 
Kevin Keegan a little bit of a, for advice. Right, okay, then this is what I'm going to do. This is my this is my plan out. I'm going to get myself back fit before I push myself into the first team, rather than pushing myself back to fitness, probably pushing myself a little bit too much, forcing myself in the in into the team, playing well for a game or two, and then getting injured or not playing well for three or four and being back out of the team, you know, stop, start, stop, start. And that was kind of the, that was kind of the progression of me when I, when I, you know, when I went there. And like I say, that was, that was, that was, that was difficult. But on a positive note, it was, it was the, the positive was, it was just playing every single game. Any game that I was involved with Man City playing in any, any, any league or any time was always a pleasure. And it was just a, such a good, environment and a good pleasing thing for me to, to achieve really right, so it's so nice to hear i'm gonna i'm gonna move on, on to one of, if you've got any other favorite memories please shout out but i'm gonna move on to one of my favorite memories of you and that, that's the 4-1 win against united um beating united for me is do you know what i remember i've been a city fan for so long i used to enjoy beating united and that was the highlight of my season if we were to beat united once in a season i was well happy if we beat them twice in a season we could have won the FA Cup for like <laughs> that was that was that was fun. So to beat the beat them four one was amazing, and that must have been brilliant for you as a, a Blake lad. Now, listen, this uh, this is going to be a tough question now. Being being a, a Blakely lad, are you are you blue or red, or you never really are you very much on the fence when it comes to very much on the fence when it comes to it like that. So when you yeah. went into that derby, you obviously had a blue tinted glasses on then for playing for City then rather than well, the, yeah every club I played for, you know, I kind of supported because I wanted to play for that team, I wanted to win for that team. It was just as simple as that. That's all. That's all I wanted to do. And when I went into that derby. And it was such a challenge to win that game that day because what a team they had. You yeah. know what? You had some unbelievable, phenomenal players in that team. But we was just collectively a really, really good squad. And on 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 our day, we could be we could have beat anybody. We could have yeah. beat anybody. I think we turned Chelsea over, didn't we? In in was it that season or was it the, the the year after that one? Sorry. But once again, with the majority of the same the same squad, and it was. Uh, it was just such a pleasing day. It, it, I, do you know what? It was the first derby won it at the at the stadium, the new stadium. It was it was such a build up with it between obviously the Keegan and the Ferguson. Yeah, you know, yeah I love it. I love it. And all that. We just yeah. always had this little bit of bickering between and going to this new stadium and everything's on the up for Man City and I couldn't, you know, for, for United supporters and United players and. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson and the coaching staff, for them to beat City on that day in the first game, in the first derby, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a bit of, bit of a big scalp for them, I would say, as well, you know, uh, just to basically kick us back down. But you know, it wasn't to be because, you know, just a, it was just something magical in there that day. And, you know, I always remember it because it was, it was a great day for me personally, you know, with all my family and friends and everybody at the game and, and to, to score as well, which against the... You know the, the the club that I grew up with, uh, and come through all the ranks, and and obviously they'd sold me on and to to score against them. It was it was a it was a memorable day for me, and, it, and what a derby day as well it was. Yeah, I just want to read the squad out that we played that day. We had, we had James, it was Dunn, Van Bijten, Distan, and Wright Phillips, Rayner, Sibierski, McManaman, Tarnett, Macken, and Fowler. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> there you go. What a team! What a team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have been. It could have been. There was a, how many people was on the bench that could have been starting that game? You know, and it was just a, we had a, we had a real, real good, good group together. And I think, I think, I just think that day everything clicked with us. And there were certain days that that happened for us. Honestly, there really was. And you know, I wouldn't say we was unstoppable because that's a you know it's a strange word, but we was we was a match for anybody on our day. And it proved that day. You know, we we didn't catch them on a on a bad day. We was just a lot better. We had a lot better quality that day, and I thought we we battered them. The better word. Oh, that's the so, word so, I was going to use as well. Them. We did batter them. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you go to that one, Dave? Before you went to America. Yeah. So, John, I live in I've lived in America for sixteen years now. So that okay. two thousand three, two thousand four season, yeah. that was I had to cram in as many games as I could because I, I moved five thousand miles away. Right. Um, in May 2004 so yeah that was uh, to leave on that note oh, leave my home country with a massive win uh, 
you know, before we started, you know, to Tom's point, winning all those trophies later on, that that was a yeah. that was a very, very, very big deal for me to, have, you know, have the bragging rights for the last right. time. So, like you say, what, what you you know, you're moving away, great moving away, present, I suppose. First derby there, getting in, beating the uh, beating United. It was uh, like I say, it was a special day, and, and people remind remind me of it, obviously, because I was part of it and. You know, like I, you know, I didn't score many goals, obviously for certain reasons, different reasons. But that was certainly a special one. But you know, when you look at different different moments, you have, uh, I scored a goal against QPR, which uh, that was it was. I think it was in the cup actually. We was I'd just come back from injury. I'd just come back from a bit of a layoff again, and it was my first goal back for you know for a while really. And it was I was so pleased with it. I was so. I was just overjoyed with it, you know, to be back and to, to score a goal again. And so people don't realise what it means he has been a footballer, to, you know, to score a goal and to score a goal for, for for Man City. For me personally, it was it was such an achievement, and it was such a it was a joy and a relief because I was back, I was back playing, I was back enjoying it and and everything. And you you hope to kick on again from that. And then obviously different things happen again, and 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 it was just stop start. But one that, for a, a special moment for me. You know the QPR get goal as well. As well, that was a, that was a big one for me. I bet you didn't sleep much that night, did you? No, we didn't. It was uh, once again. You know, you're talking about the derby goal, aren't you? It was. Uh, it was just listen. It was just. Uh, it was just. It was just magical. You know, you're getting all phone calls. You're your family and friends around, and it was just. A, it was a great day, and it was, it was one that I, I treasure anyway. You know. Look at you smiling. Bless you, John. You're smiling. You, you, you've got good feelings about that, haven't you? I love it. Right, well, let's keep that grin on that face for a couple of minutes because I want to take you back to a, a little FA Cup game, which I'm sure you've heard about probably once a week for the last 16 years, something like that. That was, I mean, Dave, you went to that game, didn't you? you, I, you yeah, I, I was there, John, as, that. Story, Dave, as I say, you know, just cramming in as many City games as I could before I left for America. That was... That's a good one that season then, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Also, didn't it? Absolutely. That was, I've never known an atmosphere or, or a, or a game like that, not just for the fans, but we could see it at the end of the game as well on all of your faces. Like, you know, there's that famous picture of Sunji High, kind of just head in his hands, just just couldn't believe what he was seeing. So, yeah, we'd love your thoughts. Even though we know you've talked about it a hundred times, we'd love your thoughts on it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, it was just a it was one of them games. Obviously, one it, it's I always look back at it now, and uh, obviously the replay was going up there. We wasn't fantastic at the time, you know. We were very, very indifferent as a team. We was, like I said, a lot of draws, defeats. Wasn't winning many. Squad was a great squad again. Some great talented players in there, but we just wasn't producing collectively. Uh, but we went there, and, you know, with the belief, obviously, that I suppose Tottenham went there thinking to themselves, right, we've got them at home, we'll, we'll beat them this like this tonight. Uh, we won't make it. Uh, it's going to be difficult for a and they started really well, didn't they? Totally they just, yeah. Unbelievable goals <laughs> as well. Really, really well. Really fast, attacking all the time, creating opportunities. And I think it was 20 odd minutes when Nick went down. And you can, you know, I don't want to be. That's right, you came on early, didn't you? You came on after yeah. about an hour, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About 20, 23 minutes, 26 minutes, but I don't want to be labelling anyone or anything. But he kind of got a sense with Nick. He wasn't up for the game. It wasn't really a game for him. Right, but, yeah. you know, that was because of his injury. And he was, you know, he was holding it a little bit, and you know, before the game or whatever reason. But you just could just sense he wasn't really wasn't right. So obviously, you know, I'll get the nod. Come on, and I think it was a couple of minutes later. As soon as he come on, he got the third. <laughs> just thinking, oh God, so, you know, you got you get you starting. Oh, you're coming on very early to try and make a difference, and it's three 0 and. All things are going through your mind again. God, is what score is he going to be? Am I going to be part of this? And then, you know, what's the next opportunity going to be? And uh, <clears throat> obviously, then the famous Joey. You know, he was always, he was always can one. I, can I just stop you there? I just, I really want, I really want to put my fly on the wall moment here. So it's half time. Half time whistle goes. Good players go down the tunnel. Spurs players go down the tunnel. You sat in the dressing room. At what point did you realise Joey Barton had been sent off? What what happened in that fifteen minutes? Was it was 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 Keegan like what 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 are you doing? I had actually turned round and looked and seen him, and seen the ref do the, the you know the red card. I was thinking, for God's sake, I don't know what he said, I don't know what happened, 
He's obviously just Joey being Joey. You know, he's very confident. If you watch the video, that you're not, you, you can clearly see what he called yeah. the referee. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. Man. I didn't really want to say, but allow you to do that. But it was uh, obviously you've seen it. So then it's you just you know to be fair, when it's three 0 like that, and you know they absolutely battered us. They battered us that first half. I think it could have been a lot more, couldn't it, from the goalkeeper? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think he was just he pulled two or three great saves off that first half again. Yeah. And it was just one of them. It was uh, so you, you're a bit relieved, really, to get in uh, just three nil, and you're thinking, right, it's half time. Come on, just let's regroup. Let's go in and regroup. And then you turn around, and that's happened to Joey, and you automatically you just think the game's gone. You know, the game's gone. Yeah, we're, not really gonna get, we're not going to get anything out of the game. So you know, you, we went into the changing rooms, and it was it was fairly quiet. Honestly, it was there was nothing at all. There was no. Shouting, there was no screaming, there was no pointing fingers, there was no team talk as such, there was no right, this is what we're going to do. I think there was one or two, was just come on, lads, you know, we've got to lift it a little bit, you know, we've got to give ourselves a little bit something, fight, anything, I'm trying to get anything out there half time. I think it was all a bit shocked, really, it was all a bit shell shocked. I mean, there's a few conversations going on about Joey and, and so on and so on, but it was, there was no real team talk, honestly, there was nothing, it was just a case of right, go on then. Go and just go and try and see the game out and, and try and get something out of the game for yourselves. And there was no real belief at all. It was, it was a strange atmosphere, strange, strange thing. So, one of the strangest ones I've been involved in anyway, because there was nothing really said apart from you know a few individual conversations with the lads. And that, to my recollection, other people might say differently, but to my recollection, that's how I seen it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, obviously, we went out and we went out a bit early. We, we, we just stood in the, in the tunnel area. And we could hear we could hear the city fans. And Dave, you, you can back me up with this. It, it was phenomenal, honestly. The airs on the back of my neck again, standing up when I'm talking about it because you could just hear you could just hear the city fans singing, just singing, and, and it was surreal. It was a surreal moment when you're just looking at each other, thinking, "What are they? What are they singing about?" <laughs> How can they sing it? You know, from what we've just shown there, that dire. Poor yeah. performance. Poor I mean, performance. honestly, John, we all knew that what was it, four thousand of us there or something. That bloody hell, we've got to get on a train or a bus, you know, back up to Manchester yeah. after this, you know, for four or five hours. So yeah. we may as well enjoy ourselves while we're here, even if we're losing. And I think that's what you found that we were just like bugger it at half time, get have a pint, yeah. and then just get out and support the support the team for the second half. But we, I mean, us as the team as well. Though, when you when you're a professional player and you you're, you're hearing that. It, it certainly does something for you, you know. It gives you that little bit of a lift that you you need because you know they were singing, they were singing our names, they were singing city songs, and just wow, you know. So we went out, and it probably did. Well, it definitely did give us that little bit of a lift, a little bit of something that we needed to that little extra 10, 20, I'd say close to 30, 40 percent that we didn't show in the first half, you know, extra. And uh, and it, it it was it, I, listen it was it was phenomenal hearing that as a player as a person being involved in that something that you know a group of individuals which the fans were at the time collectively together inspiring eleven players to go out and put on a performance like we did yeah. in the second half it was it was phenomenal it really was and uh, like you say we you know we got the we got the first. Yeah, Distan scored the first, didn't he? And did you think to yourselves then, hang on, right, we, there's something in this for us? Was was there that? Yeah. Did, was it until the second one went in? Where you? Yeah, to... I think I think even when the second one went in, you're just thinking, right, you know what? We've we've got we've got two goals back in the game here. Fantastic. If if they go on and win the game, at least we've give a fight. At least we could have you know had a bit of a fight about us, and we you know give yeah. the fans something to really cheer about a goal, you know. And, and we just wanted to repay them a little, I suppose. And you know, subconsciously you're thinking, man, we're paying the fans back a little bit, and you know, we paid the money to come up here and watch that first half display to the second half display. And when the second one went in, you, like I say, exactly the same. Just get started and just go again. It was just, it was just a mentality of right. Let's just go again. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. And the third one went in. You're thinking, well, here we go. You know, it's. We've done, we, we have done something special. We've done something special just to get ourselves back on right. level pegs with, with, with Tottenham. We would absolutely been phenomenal, you know, up until really the, 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 the second half. Because, <laughs> you know, I still, I still think they had a few chances, didn't they? The, the, the second yeah. half. 
I think Ziga had Ziga had another free kick like first yeah. five minutes of the second half, and um, you know our keeper Arison pulled off a worldy and, yeah. and kept us in the game really. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because you know I don't think we were, there was no coming back from that if that would have happened. But yeah. who knows? I just think it was, I just think it was written, and you know I, I remember thinking just before <laughs> just before the ball you know obviously came over for myself. If we go for extra time, you know, I think we'll, I think we've gone because you could see us. We were really, really leggy, and we was, you know, we was kept going, we kept going, and we had a little bit. But if we, I think if we would have gone to extra time, I think they might have got two or three more. I really do, because we was we given everything, we given absolutely everything that we well not everything because there was something else to come on there, which uh, which was Tyler's cross, and you know, I just as he as the ball went over to him. I just remember Baxter because I knew what a fantastic delivery he had of the ball. He was, he was such a talent as well, Michael Tarnett. He was his uh, his passing ability and his yeah, he had a hammer with, with, didn't he? with the ball, hammer foot. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And when he got the ball, I just remember Baxter and you know I always got told you know for headers like Baxter, get yourself to the Baxter. And when it came across, I kind of wriggled free from the man. Yeah, from, there we go. I wriggled free from him, got free from him, and just got a really good connection. And, you know, when you get a connection like that, you kind of know as a player. And I kind of knew where it was going. And, you know, you see the keeper scrambling for it. And, you know, and then he hit the back of the net. And the relief when it hit the back of the net. And just the joy, the sheer joy when I was, I felt for myself when I ran over to the fans. And you see the yeah. people's face and you see the emotion. Kind of disbelief as well, I suppose, with some, with some people, with ourselves as well, included in that. It was... It was just, it was phenomenal. It really was. And there's no better feeling when you see supporters and they are literally stunned, cheering in belief that we've just achieved something as special as we did that night. Do, do you yeah. realise that with that, that, that one goal you scored for City, you have automatically gone to cult, hero, legend status with, it, with one backstick header? Well, Everyone, every City fan knows your name. Every City fan knows this game. And you know what? It's, it's, it's phenomenal just to be talking to you now, pal, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's, for me, that's what being a footballer is all about. It's all about creating them memories. It's all about creating the, the, the memories, for, not just for yourself, but for the fans, for the fans because, and, and, and the club. Because if you can, can create memories and, and people like yourself, that you can remember where you was and what was happening at that particular time in that game, that's what being a footballer is all about. It's not, you know, you can, you can win your trophies, which is, you know, you're creating memories them as well. You can earn the most money, but create memories that will live on forever and ever and you'll be reminded about it and people will remember that game and remember you personally for your contribution in that game. That's what being a, a footballer is all about in my eyes. And that's, know, that's, just, that's just one game, particularly for me, like you said, you know, I remember from Man City fans and I'm very, very proud of, of, of that, you know, of that achievement. So was that yeah, going on as slow motion for you as, as everyone else? Because <laughs> it seemed to take an age to, to drop in the net, didn't it? Yeah. And, you know, we're in the stadium and it, it felt like half an hour before it dropped in the goal and you ran over and started. To, was it this, I mean, if it was an hour for us fans, it must have taken like five hours for it to drop in the net for you. Yeah, but, you know, like I said, you know, when you get a connection on it like that and you... You just feel, it feels good, you know, and you, as a striker, when you score a goal like that, you know you've got a good connection and, you know, it, when, once it hit the back of the net, then then you're off and then the emotions and the adrenaline starts kicking in. Oh, brilliant. And actually, when you start to go into the kickoff again, you're actually drained, you're knackered because you just, you know, all your adrenaline's gone because yeah. of the emotion. But I just remember, you know, looking back at it when, when you watch the game back, which, you know, I have, but I remember the commentator saying that John Macken, you know, he's got the weight, you know, He's got the, the fourth and the, the comeback and he should have won it in the first game. I'm thinking, God, you know, give me a little bit of credit. <laughs> Please, you know, but at the end of the day, I suppose that's commentators for you, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what was the bus ride home like? Same as always, you know, it was just one of them. It was, it was obviously you get in the phone Richard call. Richard Dunn passing around the beers. We wasn't allowed, believe me. If we, if we would have been allowed, I'm sure we would have had one or two, but we wasn't allowed, you know, uh, we still had we still had games to play, didn't we? You know, we were still, like I say, professional, and we still had uh, we had training the next day, and we still had to uh, prepare for the different games. But like I say, you know, you, you do get your opportunities to to remember that game and to celebrate that game, and and, and and we did, to be fair. You know, at the end of the day, it was it was such a 
it was a great achievement. Once again, it was a great achievement for the club. It was a great achievement for myself personally to, to be involved in that comeback where majority of fans remember the game and, and, and they know me you know, for scoring the winner in that game. Well, I know, I know Dave's still got the hangover from that, haven't you? Is it 16, 16 years, years later? later, yeah. It's just <laughs> one of the... I mean, even with all the highs, John, as you say, that we've had over the last decade, you know, with the Premier League titles and whatever, yeah. you know, I think for some of us older fans, like, you know, me and me and Tom, we are made fun of all the time in our in our group yeah. for being a bit older than everyone else. That it's such a massive memory for us because we weren't winning trophies then, yeah. but we did something pretty special. Uh, that I'm, I'm saying we, you did something special uh, yeah. that night, and it's something that uh, an older City fan. I, I'm just, it's something that I always go back to. I, I want to yeah. show my kids as well that you're not going to believe this. Yeah, well, Dave, I'm telling you, you say you say we, it was we, basically, because, you know, like I said to you, you know, what we heard in that tunnel at half time, it was phenomenal. And it really, really did inspire us and, and give us that extra energy and belief that we could go out and do uh, what we did, what we achieved. And, you, you know, you don't get that all the time. You don't you don't get that feeling where the 12th man, you know, the, it's, it's always, always said, you know, the 12th man, the, the crowd, are they going to get, are they going to give you that inspiration? They're gonna, and that night was certainly one of them occasions where, you know, the fans were the 12th, 12th man and they, they did inspire us and they did push us on to, 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 to get the victory, really. You know, and it wasn't just us 11 there or the 16 or, the, you know, the people who followed down, the 18 on the, in the squad. It was the 3,000, 4,000 City fans that was there that evening as well that really, really contributed to that, to that special, memorable game. Yeah. I think, really? we always, I think we always thought that there was, you know, with Arsenal and... United just being so good around that era that I think City fans always felt that our best chance of a trophy was always going to be that FA Cup, always. Yeah. yeah. And so we always went into it every season thinking, you know, this is it. We've got a good squad. And yeah. particularly when we have games like that against Spurs and, and we go through to the next round, you're thinking this, this, this could be it. This could be our 30 well, we plus year way round. over. We got United the next round, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, which yeah. once again I was really looking forward to it and he pulled me in the morning of the game Keegan, Kevin Keegan and said I wasn't playing and I think you can imagine <laughs> I wasn't ple- I wasn't too pleased and I had a few words which you know I don't regret saying uh, or stating my case why I think I should be playing because that's me as a player I, I really wanted to play and I really wanted to show showcase myself and be involved in this memorable run you know after especially after that game but you know, at the end of the day, I, I respected his decision. You know, I sat on the bench and respected his decision, and it wasn't meant to be. We, you know, we got beat two 0 But I always believed that if I would have been picked, you know, it might have been a different story. But at the end of the day, that's football. You, you're always going to believe that you can make a difference. As a, can, as I, a can I can I talk about the elephant in the room here? Because it seems comes in quite an apt time. Because you're talking about you, you scored a last minute winner for us against Spurs. Yeah. There's, 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 for, for whatever reason, uh, Keegan didn't pick you against against United going into it, and obviously, when when, when Stuart Pearce brought David James on, yeah, the first thing that I think of is right. We need we need a goal. Of, of Robbie Fowler missed the penalty. Is that right? That's the game. Robbie Fowler missed yeah. the penalty, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, we need a last minute winner. Who's who's on the bench that's going to get us a last minute winner? Who's done it before? Yeah. Yourself. What was going through your head when, when, when David James went? Was it pre-planned that he's done this before? Well, it was pre-planned. I mean, you know, listen, uh, it's, people, always, people always put me in the category of he put him on instead of me. Well, he, he didn't really. He just he was doing it anyway, you know. It wasn't, wasn't a case of I was going on, he changed his mind and he put him on there. It was just a case of that was Stuart Pearce being Stuart Pearce, making a decision that, he, I mean, he said he said previously, hasn't he, on I think a uh, radio show that he was asking his, he was going to, he told his assistant in the morning or the, the day before he was going to do it, Steve Wigley, and I'm thinking Steve Wigley wasn't even there when I was there, so he's got that wrong for starters, and right. you know, I think he got it wrong on the day as well because, like you said, I scored that last minute winner there. I, I was throughout my career, what I've done is I've always scored goals in important games when I've been playing or contributed to goals in important games, that's, that's helped us win games. Yeah. And uh, so I believe I was let down. I, I believe I was let, I probably let down a little bit by him there because he didn't show a lot of faith in me uh, in terms of 
Oh, it wasn't God. just letting you down, though, John. It was letting a lot of City fans down as well, doing that. You know what? I, I totally agree with you. And like I said, I, I don't think he takes the responsibility enough because, you know, he tries to dismiss it saying he would have been Mourinho if it would have paid, it would have come off. But at the end of the day, it's kind of, you know, he's, he's got a responsibility to the fans as well, hasn't he? And, you know, to do something as ridiculous as it was at the time and is still today because if it was such this magical thing, then many other managers would have been doing it, wouldn't they? And, you know, I know they send the keeper up, but that's a totally different ball game. It's, you know, I, I just don't think it was a sensible thing to do. I don't think it was the right thing to do. I don't think it was the respectful thing to do for the club, for the fans, for myself, for himself, really, where he wanted to go. And for the players as well, you know, because the players are looking at it. And we, we, listen, we all got wind of it beforehand and, you know, your you little rumours. And I knew, I knew it, was, it was happening uh, because I knew what Stuart Pearce was like and I knew what he, how he wanted to make a name for, it, for himself in, in that aspect. But you, you just, you accept it, don't you? You accept it and you move on. But You, you do, but... You do, but in such a key game, and he, he, like you say, he's looking to make a name for himself there. To to do something like that, even if you knew it was, even knew it was, I, mean, I still can't get my head around the the, the logistics of actually going ahead and doing it. Did, did he lose a lot of respect in the training room for that? Because you know, a lot of City fans afterwards, and still to this day, and I still question what, why, what, what was he playing at? Many people do, and many people joke about it as such, and you know, try and try and make me look a bit of a, you know, a fool in, in terms of it. And like I always say, you know, it wasn't as if it was my, I had anything to do with it. It was just a case of it was him trying to make a name for himself, for me anyway, what he, you know, his decision. And he doesn't take responsibility for that in terms of, well, really, you know, you, you make the club look a bit of a laughing stock doing something like that. Because I don't, don't remember, that, I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember any clubs doing it since either. <laughs> Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Managers are clubs doing it since, and you know, it's, I don't think it's happened before that very often, and since that very often. So, or if if at all, so it's it kind of, you know, it's become a bit of a laughing stock. And you know, to me to be associated with that, I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't, I didn't really have much to do with it. It's just yeah. his own personal thought of, well, you know, I'm going to do this to try and make a name, and it's going to look wonderful. Well, he didn't. He looked foolish, if anything. You know, yeah. and I suppose it's a bit disrespectful to the opposition team as well because if somebody's doing that, then you you kind of you kind of looking at them thinking, right? Well, I'm going to put a goalkeeper up there because I don't think you're very good. And, yeah, you know, that's I mean, a really good shout, actually. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, I just Wait. don't get it. I just don't get what he, what what the thought process was behind it. And like you say, many many fans do exactly the same. And <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, listen, you have got to respect his decision. He made it and he moved on and. He did what he did, and he is who he is, and, and and that's football. You know, some people, some managers, some coaches, some players make strange, strange decisions, and you know they try and justify it, I suppose, by giving an answer, which <laughs> once again, their answers don't make sense when you give them. Can't always back up what they're saying. <laughs> what they're saying, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. You, you know, people talk about it, and. I, well, I, I, from from a, from a city fan, John, you know, it was a bizarre situation, and. From from my point of view, looking at your career as as, as a City player, you, you'll always be known as the striker that you know scored against United in the four one. You'll always be known as the striker against Spurs, and yeah. and you know for me, you tick so many boxes as one of these players that comes plays for City, holds his heart on his sleeve, plays a strong game, and it really enjoys playing for the club. And for me, I can't ask any more than that for a, for, for a player. I really yeah. can't. Like I say, I appreciate that. And for me, that's what being a footballer is all about. And for that certain game, he would have made a name for himself if he would have put me on and I would have scored the goal, which he can say as much as he wants. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't in great runner form or whatever it may be. But if he would have put me on and he would have done that, he would have made a name for himself because he would have got in Europe. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, he never knew because he wanted to do something totally bizarre and, and unusual and... You know, I think I think that's where he did lose a I little think, bit. I still can't believe he did it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think I think he lost a little bit of respect there from, from players and from individuals. And you know, listen, I don't like to call people because it's not really me, and I don't like to to put people down and and, and say negative things about them. But at the end of the day, I think that was a, a very strange decision. And yeah, I don't suppose he'll ever say he regrets doing it. But at the end of the day, I think everybody knows. That it was a mistake and it was a it was a stupid stupid error. Can I ask you such a big following and a big fan base in the club? 
for, this is this is the last question about this now. Did you ever speak to Jamo about it? Yeah, he's, listen, Jamo was, Jamo was a top top lad, top professional. He knew what was See, going did on. Did he say what what's going on here? I, I wasn't. Did no, he? Th- he knew. He knew before. We all knew before. And Jamo, being the professional he is, and being the person he is, he just ran on and just tried to kick people and <laughs> headless chicken. Yeah, yeah. Did and, and, and I think that's what it. I think that's what it was. Jamo, listen, Jamo was a little bit embarrassed. I think all the players was a little bit embarrassed. If I'm honest, you know. But at the end of the day, they still yeah. they still had a job to do, and they still had to try and go and score a goal. And and that 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 that's what it was. And unfortunately, that was the last time I was in in a Man City squad, and you know that's that's a big disappointment for me as well. Yeah, and, and the rest is history. It, it is, it is. But at the end of the day, like I say, you know, it, you create them memories, you create the uh, the, the, the moments for yourselves yeah. where you, you know, you, you know where you was. You remember the game. You remember me personally for certain situations and scenarios, and and that's what it. All, that's that means more to me than anything to to be able to recollect these these more these moments with with yourselves, the fans who, who really make who really matter. Uh, that, I, that I was part of it, and I was part of this, you know, the famous club and the, the, these famous moments when, when we we was we was achieving great things or good things, you know. It must be great as a professional to know that you brought smiles to thousands of people. Absolutely, absolutely, great absolutely. feeling, brilliant. Well, we, we need to, we need to move on quick because I'm, I'm conscious that we, we've taken up most of your evening <laughs> on, a, on a before the bank holiday. Just a couple of last few questions because obviously you've. Um, You've moved on to um, the, the management hand uh, with Radcliffe. Yes. You moved on from Radcliffe recently, haven't you? Yes, I've moved on from there now. Well, what, yeah, what's John Macken then. What, what's next for you, pal? What's, where, where's, where's the future life for you? I'd love to get into. I'd love to get into the managing route. Uh, I really believe. Uh, I really enjoy it. I really believe that I'm, I'm, I'm okay at it. You know, I've, got, I've still got a hell of a lot to learn. Coaching side for it, managing side for it. I do like the managing avenue because I believe I'm a, more of a people's person. In terms of managing people and, and getting the best out of people, and, and, and really trying to motivate people to, to to achieve achieve things that they you know that they didn't believe they can do or they want to go and push on to, but they need that little bit of guidance. <clears throat> and I want to I want to try and do that as high as possible, and in in in, a, in levels where you know I'm going to be challenging myself as well. And I think that's got to be the goal of anybody if you go into any sporting environment in, in terms of coaching or managing you've got to push yourself to as high as you possibly can you've always got to be challenging yourself and you've always got to have you've always got to have a I suppose a, a degree of understanding of, of who you are personally in terms of what what environment you want to be in and around and you know I think that's is when you're in an environment in football you, you get to know the good people and the bad, as I say bad people, but the good people who are going to help you and are going to help you further yeah. your career and you get the negative people who are just basically in it for themselves and, and they, you know, they're not really looking out for you. And, you know, I, I believe I, I want to take that to mind the way I do things and, and be positive in, in my, I suppose, my action and my structure and my philosophy of how I want to manage and, and, and coach. I can, I can, I can see manager in you. I can see the way you talk about football. It was such a passion. You've got a smile on your face, and you're so. I th- I'm going to say passionate again because the way you talk about football and your position and your play and your playing career. You, if you can bring that to a younger player, another player that's coming yeah. through, that must be that must be really enthusiastic for them to see, to see this 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 pro coming to me and talking to me. Where, where's next for you? Do you have, do you have anywhere else lined up? Not at the minute. No, not at the minute. I've got. Uh, I've spoken to one or two different different clubs in. Uh, once again, you know, non-league, uh, different ones. I spoke to one or two in leagues, you know, just different roles, but uh, nothing, nothing uh, concrete at all at the minute. But I'm, I'm looking for opportunities. Listen, I'd love to be given a chance in in league football as manager, as a coach. As I'd love to be given the opportunity to go and manage in in the Premier League. You know, if my ambition is not to go and manage Man City, then what's the point in being in it? You know, right? Well, no, if, absolutely. If I ever achieved that absolutely memorable fantastic is it possible it's going to be very difficult but at the end of the day you know football is football is there to make dreams happen in it and to, to make them come true and you know you've got to have that ambition and that drive and that desire to reach to the top because it's pointless otherwise yeah well, oh, you. remember john pep's looking for a number two <laughs> exactly oh. exactly 
Is that just... something that you would do if, you know, we see, you know, people like John Terry now who's gone to Villa and trying to, you know, work his way with Dean Smith? Is that maybe an avenue to get to the Premier League that you might want to do is, is try and support the actual manager and Absolutely. take Absolutely. over? It's not an easy it's not an easy profession to get into. Uh to get into it, listen, we can all do our badges and we can all go and do your coaching, but it's not an easy it's not an easy way to get into football clubs and to go straight into first team and league club managing and, and coaching and and so on and so on. The opportunities are not there, uh, or not many anyway. So it's it's always difficult. And when then when they do come along, you've got to have a you've got to have a bit, a bit of something about you to to real get hold of them and, and, and take hold of them and, and grasp it. But if they if they do come if an opportunity does come for for me personally for that to go down that avenue, then yeah, I would I would look at that. I would definitely take it with, with both hands because, like I say, I'm. You know, I'm 42 years of age now. I've still got a hell of a lot of learning to do in terms of my coaching and managerial roles. I really have. I've got so much to learn and people to learn from as well. And it's just about me now really focusing on on, on that path and that, that avenue and the direction I want to go in. And, and if, if opportunities do, go off in different directions, looking at them and seeing if they're going to be worthwhile for me personally. You know, we see you see so many um, kids going overseas to to try their trade. Lots going into Germany and stuff. Is that ever ever considered for yourself to go into Germany, France, whatever it might be? To absolutely, absolutely. I think it's I think it's one avenue uh, that needs addressing in terms of managerial and coaching coaches going out to different countries and getting that experience because it doesn't happen very often, does it? I mean, it's only just over the last couple of years, three, four, five years that young players are going over abroad and, and playing the trade over there and then coming back and, and so on and so on and <clears throat> seeing a real different culture, seeing a different style of football or a different approach to football. And I think that's that's an avenue that I personally would love to explore. But I think it's an area which other, I say other countries, that's up to them to to introduce for to get British coaches or English coaches, or Irish coaches or whatever it may be. But it's, it's an avenue that I believe the coaches association, the managers association, should really look at trying to introduce pathways uh, into different countries and different different football clubs for them to get an experience. I agree. But one thing I can guarantee you, John, is you've got a few thousand City fans supporting you every move, mate. So you know, you hope you know that we're all behind you, whatever you do. Absolutely, we Absolutely. are. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah. I think I think we'll leave it there for the evening, David. Have you got anything else to add? Uh, I probably just. Uh, you kind of answered this already, John, but uh, I'm really big into creative players. You know, obviously I love David Silva, you know, looking forward to seeing how Bowden goes on. When you arrived at the club, Bernabia and Berkovic, yeah. would you take, uh, it sounds like you'd take Berkovic over Bernabia, but both wonderful players, right? Yeah. I, I, do you know what? It's like I, I, when I've been asked this question before, I've always said Bernabia, uh, sorry, Berkovic, but you know, looking at it, you, you couldn't really choose between either one of them. I, I'd like to be greedy and say both of them, if I'm honest. Just sensational players, weren't they? Oh, he Just he unbelievable. Uh, and were you were you on the pitch when Berkovic scored that worldie against Norwich? You know, when he basically danced around the whole. I think we beat them three one that yeah, uh, May Road. Right. You, you weren't there of, yet. A couple of weeks, a couple of weeks later, a month or so later, when I signed, I think it was. But, yeah, I remember watching it all. Oh, you must, must have been rubbing your hands there. Like, I'm yeah. going to be playing with him in a couple of weeks. <laughs> exactly. And like I say, you know, some of the things that, you know, you've seen him do week in, week out was, it was phenomenal. But me personally, what i seen him do on the training pitch as well, it was, it was second to none, honestly. It was, it was unbelievable at times. But so, so was Benavia. I mean, I remember Benavia shooting practice, chipping Peter Smeichel three three times on the, on the bounce. And it was just oh, phenomenal to see yeah. everyone was just, you know, holding her hands on the head. I bet like Schmeichel that. loved that, didn't he? He, threw his he took his gloves off, threw him down, and walked in. <laughs> <laughs> it was just nobody could do that to him, could he? And he did it three times on the bounce, and everyone was just stars were going, "Wow, how has he done that?" But, oh, brilliant, brilliant, phenomenal. Listen, John, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, and um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having thank me. Thank you, John. Have a cracking weekend. See you soon, pal. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. How good was that? 
Yeah, well, we're, yeah, we're still live on Facebook right still now. So anyone who's uh, watching, I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, a dream come true for me. Someone who was there uh, at the uh, White Hard Lane for that game, and uh, you know, a local Manchester lad who's obviously got like Hendry got a real love for City, which we all do. Uh, that that was just incredible for me. What what a top fella. What a nice bloke. Yeah, I, I, I can't. Uh... I need to I need to go in and have a glass of red wine. I think and just digest the conversation we've just we've had with him because it's he's answered so many of my questions that I wanted to answer. I th- I'm, uh, all the little things like the the the, the Stuart Pearce, uh, James. What was it like scoring the f- the fourth goal? You know, and yeah, just the score against United. What must have been like? And there was always that rumor was a United fan. I you know, I heard a rumor he was a United fan. For for him to say actually no, I've never really I've always been on the fence. That was that was music to my ears. That he's kind of ticked a little box there for me. Yeah, yeah, just a d- top fella, and um, I, I really do hope that he finds um, a, a really good role for himself in football somewhere because he, he deserves it. And uh, you know, plenty of opportunity around the world for him. You know, if he wants to come out here to America, I'm sure an MLS club, someone with his pedigree uh, and the clubs he played for, they'd absolutely snap him up. So, That's yeah, really I like putting a word with the Portland Timbers for him, and um. See if that comes hey, to anything. Strange things have happened for networking, Dave. If, yeah. There's not much you can do, pal. Yeah, that's all we can do. But I tell you, yeah, I'm really. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed that just as much as we enjoyed asking those questions because that was um, that was that was great fun. It's great to speak to him, and I, I think it's I think it's fair to say I'm, I'm going to be his, his fan from now on more more than ever. I, I wish him all the luck in the world going into his uh, his future management career. Yeah, I didn't know, you know, going into that whether he was, you know, a you know professional who was just, you know playing for a, you know, a variety of clubs and it was, you know, it was a job at the end of the day. And I didn't get that from him at all. I, I got, I got from him that football is his passion and particularly, you know, that answer when you asked him, Tom, you know, what did you think about, you know, what, did you have any, you know, thoughts in your mind, you know, when you left Preston for City and he went, no, it was Manchester City. You know, why would anyone, I mean, he taught like a fan. City want me, City want me, I'll sign for City. There's, no, there's not even a question mark for it. Brilliant, no. night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's just as we know, everyone who's watching this and, you know, the MIB team, that's all of our dream. It's never going to happen. But given the opportunity to, to put on a blue shirt for five seconds and, 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 and play, play for our beloved club, and, you know, he, he realised that. So, fair play to him. And just... Um, so funny as well about Sunji High as well, obviously. Oh, that we've got a, a, a good him mate of him. So. That we need to do a little skit for that. We need to do a little comedy sketch for that, don't we? That's just that's just brilliant. Um, yeah, and uh, you know Sunji High as well. Still got those ties with the club as well, and it sounds like a lot of those players in his era really still having a you know an affection uh, and, and love for the club. You know the the Duns and obviously Macken. Um, you know Joey Barton. You know all those kind of players. They just seem to really do have an uh, you know affection for us, which is as a City fan, that's really all you want at the end of the day. You know we see all these comments on MIB. You know every day that we want players who are, you know are playing for the badge, and I got that real sense from John that he just wanted to play for that badge. You know, and he and he and it kills him that over three seasons he was only able to play. 51 times, you know, because without injuries, that could have been 100 times and it could have been 30 goals, 30, 40 goals he scored for us. You could generally see in his face it killed him being injured that much, didn't it? You could see, yeah. you see he was really frustrated with that. And I can understand that frustration massively. Yeah. Came, do you want me to, can I just read through the, the, the squad from our 2001-2002 season? Yeah, go for it. Okay, this might take a while. It's a bit of a side chat. I wanted to do it while I was talking to him, but it would take too long. So we've got Nicky Weaver, Carlo Nash, Simon Royce and Brian Murphy as our goalkeepers. Carlo Nash. Uh, our, our, goal, our, our goalkeepers, our defenders, Gerard Vikins, Simon Calissimo, Paul Ritchie, Sunji High, Richard Dunn, Steve Howie, Lucian Matomo, Stuart Pearce, Nicholas Jensen, Danny Tiato, Danny Granville, Richard Edgill, Tyrone Mears and Lauren Charvet. Wow, Lauren Charvet. Yeah. Lauren Charvet. Midfield, we had Glenn Whelan, Kevin Horlock, Alf Hink Harland, Jeff Whitley, Christian Ngui, Dixon Atuhu, Joey Barton, Tony Grant, 
Nicky Summerby, Terry Cook, Chris Shuka, Al Berkovich, Ali Benavia, Leon Mike. Up front, we had uh, Darren Huckabee. Um, Alun Torre, I don't remember him. I don't remember that name at all. No. Sean Wright Phillips, Paul Dickoff, Sean Gota, John Macken, Power One Shop, and Chris Killen. Bloody hell, what a squad that was. That was massive. For a. Uh... And, and again, you know, that was championship. I mean, so it's no it's no wonder, really, with that strength of squad that we, you know, we were promoted as champions, 108 goals. You know, I get it. And then, as you said, Tom, you know, we, we get promoted and he brings in even, you know, significantly good players as well. Fowler and um, Anelka and Distan, who's, who's in your all-time City eleven, But it's, it's kind of... It, it's it's nice to hear from John that, you know, yeah, that, that squad, when you look at it, probably did underachieve. Yeah, I know United and Arsenal was just streets ahead of anyone. Yeah. But we had enough to be dangerous there of, you know, get a Champions League spot or, you know, win a trophy or get to a final or something. That was a that was a good team. It's phenomenal. I'm, I'm on a bit of a high now, Dave. I won't lie. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, you know... We'll we'll see maybe if it'll, if it'll come back on because uh, that was I mean I think we could have got kept talking he gave us more well more than an hour of his time. Did that did that just, it, did, it seemed like I was talking to him for about twenty minutes. I can't believe that was an hour. That was an hour and fifteen minutes. Was it really? Crikey! I could have talked to him all night. What a yeah. top bloke! Absolute yeah. top bloke. Well, all right. Wait. Quarter past nine, mate. I don't know what time over it is in in Oregon, but it's uh, uh, it is uh, yeah it's one fifteen here so. Right, yeah. I'm going to love you and leave you, pal. Thank yeah, you. wonderful. Love that. Right, stuff. Happy. See you later, Blue. Catch you later. Until we die. Cheers, Let's bye. Go. Bye.